Hey, everybody. See, people are rolling in now. Sorry about the couple minute delay. When everybody rolls in, let me go ahead and share my screen so we can look at something pretty. There we go. I feel like I've got the wrong Steven up there. I don't know. Well, while we wait, let me introduce myself. So, hey, everybody, I'm Ricky Cicchini. I'm the VP of product. Mostly not sick, still a little sick. So I'm sorry if I sound like this or cough. I'll try not to. We'll see. With me is not Stephen Yu, but we have Stephen Steck, who is the chief technology officer of Adaptive Catalog. But I'm missing your picture. I'm sorry, Stephen. Nah, it's fine. Still a Stephen. Maybe Stephen Yu is joining us. We'll see. Again, apparently we're learning in real time that we've lost power in the Northwest, apparently. So bear with. And today we're going to be talking about uh, Cloud Radial Storefront, which is powered by obviously Cloud Radial and Adaptive Catalog. It's going to be pretty informal. These deep dive webinars aren't something that we're going to go super suit and tie, as you can probably tell. We're just going to walk through a little bit technically, nothing too crazy about kind of how it works from start to finish and then what you can expect for, you know, functionality, uh, you know, features, um, you know, use cases and whatnot. And if you have any questions, you guys feel free to throw it in the chat in the QA. We'll get to them. If we don't get to them during the webinar live on the call, we'll answer them afterwards. We'll we'll send you some messages and whatever. And if you're watching this uh, and you couldn't make it, then hopefully no big deal because this is recorded. We're going to throw this up on YouTube. Uh, we'll make sure that anyone who signed up gets the recording of this. And then obviously uh, we're going to post this around too. So you can share this after the fact as well. But let's get right into it. So I hopefully don't start coughing too quickly during this thing. Let's go with who we both are. Um, I'll start since I represent Cloud Radio. Cloud Radio is founded by Jeff Ferris, uh, basically as a way to make sure that clients and MSPs had a way to meet in the middle ground. So Cloud Radio went from a singular product, which was a client portal, to now a kind of a suite of products. And the entire goal is to just help MSPs make better contact with their clients, whether that's through a portal and helping them you know, interface better with tickets, or like in this case with the storefront to help them uh, make a purchasing experience better. We just wanna help you guys have a smoother, easier way to interact with those clients and manage them too. And then for Adaptive Catalog, I had a nice spiel written up, but I feel like Steven might wanna fill in for his own company. Uh, sure, yeah. So Adaptive Catalog is a product search and procurement company. So we help IT resellers, MSPs, source hardware, software, cloud services, and your own managed services. Um, We'll pull in from your distributors, from your CRM, uh, all of that, and allow you to send that to a quoting tool or put up a custom branded storefront for your customers to to purchase commonly ordered items or bundles. Which I understand is a pain in the butt for most people. Uh, from what I've what I've spoken to, hopefully for the people that are on this webinar as well, you've experienced the same thing. So. Really excited to work together. I think we have something really awesome to offer. Obviously, Cloud Radio bringing the client-facing part and Adaptive Catalog doing literally all the hard work. So it works out really well for us. And then uh, that's my two two slide PowerPoint. Look at that. I don't have anything else. So let's just get straight to taking a look at how this thing works and what it actually looks like in real life. We've done a couple of these. So if you've if you've watched or heard of it before, uh, not super uncommon. We've been working on this for a while, and we're pretty close to full release or at least a beta release to everybody. So uh, if you're our Cloud Radio customer, be, you know, be excited this is coming soon. And if not, hopefully this, uh, this can give you a little glimpse. So I'll be driving for the majority, but again, Stephen, if you have anything to say or if anyone has any questions, please feel free to pop in and, and talk about it. So I'm starting off inside of Cloud Radio because what I wanna do is kind of paint the picture of what an end user experience looks like start to finish. And we really wanted it to be something that was like super simple. So we wanted like a, uh, Amazon experience, right? That was just gated towards specific products and services and whatever have you that you curate, right? So from an end user perspective, it's as easy as the end user logs into their portal and in some form or fashion, you can customize what that looks like, but they have a big button that says, go to the store, go to the storefront, go to whatever have you, right? You can customize what that looks like. When the user clicks on that button, they're going to get put into that store and up goes the store and they get the products put in front of them. Again, whether you want to have a ton of products and you want to let them search for them, or you just want to have a, a couple of select ones, featured ones, 
and you want to let them kind of shop and add to their cart, right? So maybe it's even a bundle. So let's say we have a full-on employee bundle of stuff, and that bundle includes a laptop and a cable and a license coming from Pax8, right? Maybe it comes from different sources. We can put all that stuff together and say, yep, that works. Let's add that to the cart. Cool. Keep shopping if we want to, right? We can go back, maybe add a security audit service because we're feeling nice and spendy today. And then once all that stuff's done, we have our stuff in the cart and we can go ahead and check out. So I'm happy to report that there's not that much to it because we wanted to make it, again, super simple and straightforward. So from the end user perspective, it's an e-commerce kind of feel that they, they should feel very comfortable and familiar with. And then as we go through and actually proceed through the checkout process, that's where it's going to kind of be dealer's choice on what happens. So if I wanted to have any other notes, in this case, I don't, I could throw them in there as a user. And then I'm kind of off to the races with putting in my information and calculating tax and whatnot. Now, when I actually go ahead and submit here, I'm not going to, but if I were to, in my specific instance, it would create an opportunity in my PSA, which in this case, I'm connected to ConnectWise PSA. Um, and then it would be up to, to me as the theoretical MSP to go through and actually fire off all that stuff. Now, the way that our integration, specifically Cloud Radial and Adaptive Catalog works, it doesn't do that final bit of procurement, but Adaptive Catalog can also do procurement as well. So if that's something you're interested in, um, certainly you can, you can discuss with them. But for right now, the integration with us, the storefront portion of Cloud Radio will get you as far as generating everything, making sure that everything you're looking for is up to date and in stock. So by the time that you get that opportunity, it has everything they want in there and it should be really, really easy for you to just go, yep, 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 do a final check and then complete that thing. Not too bad. That's all there. Sorry, really all there is for the end user experience. So let's look at how sweet and powerful it is to get to this part where you can build stuff and kind of assemble your products to your preference. So back inside of Cloud Radio, we'll go back over here. Setting this thing up is a breeze. Again, we've tried to make this as easy as possible. Uh, if you're in your Cloud Radio portal and you're setting it up start to finish, you're going to go into your partner in your settings area. And then like a lot of our integrations, you're just going to go over to your integrations on the right under configuration. And with literally two clicks, you're pretty much done. So integrations, there's our storefront brand new. And then mine is already complete. But if yours was not, it would say set up. And the way that we have ours done, and again, because this is a deep dive, I'm going to take time to kind of talk through all these points in granularity, is we have our starter version, which is free. So if you have Cloud Radial, um, you get storefront for absolutely free. And that means that you're going to be able to create those products, create the bundles, um, importing in from the PSA. Uh, supported PSAs right now are ConnectWise, Autotask, and Kaseya BMS, and kind of get all that stuff set up and going. You can also even have the option to take it the final step, which I don't have set up in my test area, to do a Stripe checkout so you can actually collect payment at the end too. And there's that. Now, I'll walk through that, and I'll walk through exactly what that looks like in a moment, but we can also talk about kind of the upper-level versions. When you get to the professional and enterprise versions of Cloud Radial's storefront, you get to the logistics of pulling in products from their distributors, which is probably where a lot of MSPs draw the biggest value because then you can cross compare, uh, cross shop, um, pull in stock from different areas and really kind of get the best experience possible. And we pull from you know some of the more popular ones. So again, Adaptive Catalog does a fantastic job of pulling all that stuff much, much faster than probably what you're used to. Uh, and again, that's gonna be across like Ingram and TD Synx and DNH and Pax8. And it's going to pull a lot of the details from those distributors. So you have to do a lot less work to make your storefront look really pretty. And even all the way up to enterprise, it gets really fancy where we can do really any distributor. As long as we have a price file, uh, we, it's kind of fair game. So it really opens it up to a lot of customizabilities. But just for the sake of the, the webinar, not going super, super crazy, I'm going to talk about what it looks like so you can get an idea of how to build this thing out and where it goes. Uh, we're going to have a couple questions. And Stephen, I might throw them your way or if you want to start looking at them. Mm -hmm. Be helpful. Yep. Um, one of the ones was, are there approval workflows after a user submits cart, uh, you know, like an approval back to a client approver? Is that possible today? Uh, there, it is something we are actively working on. Um, so it's on our roadmap to do uh, kind of a, a user would be able to submit a cart of products up to their approver who would then make the actual purchase. Um, you can obviously set up a, a workflow rule in, inside of something like ConnectWise Manage so that an opportunity in a specific status would need, would trigger like a quote or something like that. 
Um, but that is something we are actively working on um, because we know it's a lot of a lot of MSPs want something like that. Yeah, um, that's a good question, James, because I've already had a couple, you know, we've been running this in alpha for a little bit. And a lot of people have asked me that even to begin with. So the other thing you can do in addition to what everything Stephen just said is that when you actually go through and, you know, decide who gets access to the button, to the store, there's levels of access controls within Clock Radial too. So theoretically, you could even make the button only available to points of contact and stuff. So if you wanted to have it absolutely open to everybody, then certainly approvals come into play. If you wanted to have it only visible to points of contact that should be able to purchase anyways, we can do that too. So even though there's not a formal approval process, there's still some workarounds today that can get you at least closer to better access. Um, my dear friend, anonymous attendee who shows up at every webinar. I love that guy. He uh, he asked, is Halo PSA support incoming? And that's that's a good question for adaptive. I know that you guys have been working on those three. Are there other PSAs on the roadmap too? Or is it just those three for now? Uh, they are on the roadmap. Um, we are kind of, we're always seeing which integrations are the most uh, requested to figure out how we should prioritize, but Halo is is pretty high up there. So I, I mean, I, I can't make any direct promises, but I would guess probably early next year we'll come out with a Halo integration. Um, yeah. Yeah. And the good news is, I mean, I'm not going to put any words in your mouth, but the, since we work with Halo 2, the nice thing is Halo has a pretty good, robust API and they're working on it. You know, obviously much newer than a lot of the other PSAs. So uh, at least they make it pretty easy for us to work with them. Yep. <laughs> There's that cough. But hey, let's get started with the actual look at behind the scenes. So the setup process, super easy. And what happens when I click that button, I know I navigated away from there, is when you click on the setup storefront thing, you're going to get an email. And everybody that starts with CloudRail Storefront starts with the starter version. So you get an email, you get into your storefront, you're kind of off to the races. What does that look like? Well, let me pull up this other window here. So here is our actual storefront itself. And when you actually get into it, you'll land at something that looks like this. And setting this thing up is actually really easy, especially with the starter version. There's not too much to do. And the process is super easy. So I'm going to walk you guys through it almost like I would do an implementation. And it's something that an implementation of this thing, like you can be up and running in like genuinely 30 minutes to an hour. Like, and that's if you're just kind of like watching a video and clicking through it. So the majority of the stuff comes from the management of the storefront itself. The storefront is customizable. We wanted to make it look like it was again, super clean and easy. Uh, and again, this is all adaptive work. I say we a lot, but I really mean them, but hey, collaboration. And setting that stuff up and looking good is easier than ever, right? So when you first get in there, you can obviously change your colors and change your, your title tar, title bar and description and whatnot. And you get a nice little preview here. So anything you put in here, you can literally get a live view. So a lot of the stuff here depends on your preferences. If you want to do a nice dark theme one, if you want to do a light theme, however have you, go on and explore. Now you can go through and do your terms and conditions and whatnot, but all this stuff right here is literally just to get the feel looking good. What I usually recommend when we set up the thing is you kind of want to get to that experience as fast as possible of putting products onto the storefront. So I'll come back to these and I'll kind of work through how they usually go. But the majority of the time what people are looking for is how do I actually add products? So when you hook up to Starter, what happens is your PSA key that you're using in Cloud Radial gets sent over to Adaptive. Adaptive takes that and looks at your products inside of your PSA and pulls those through. So for example, when I'm doing a search inside of here, this is connected to my ConnectWise, what's going to happen is you're going to see that I'm returning some results. I have 4,500 products inside of my PSA. So if I search for my Surface Studio, which I know I have a ton of, I'm going to return a bunch of them. And with a PSA connected uh, product list, it really depends on how much information I have in the PSA, which most MSPs that are running this aren't going to have all that much information in there. They might have price and a couple of details, but not super crazy. So if I click on the details of an individual item, I can get in there and see some of the description. And we're going to come back to these in a second, how they can be really helpful. But the gist is I want to put an image, put some details, and then basically ultimately add that to my storefront. And that's what's going to put that in front of my customers. So start to finish, making sure that we can get to, and I'll be bouncing back and forth between these, so hopefully nobody gets a seizure. But getting to this stuff where you're able to say, yep, there's a Pax8 license, or yep, there's a projector, and there's a little bit of description and whatnot comes to it is literally as easy as searching for the product saying, this is the one I want in there. We're going to go ahead and edit it. Again, this is where you can write in your description and add your image as you want. And then literally just click on, Hey, include in the store and put it as featured. And that's, what's going to put it in your store and put it as one of those big featured items at the top. 
the moment I hit save, that's going to be done. So we can actually go ahead and look at one of the ones that I've already done, like this one, or something. this one I think is the actual real one. And it is true to form. That's exactly the one I have in there. So when I make a change, it goes instantly out there. So that's super simple. And that's super easy to pull that in there. Now, if you wanted to add a bundle, that's something else that's also very easy. And that's very common for people. Um, bundles are going to be the one of the bigger values that we can do with the storefront, because obviously uh, the use case for a lot of people, as we talked about, you know, whether storefront would be a good idea and how it can be used is wanting to build stuff like new employee bundles and recommendations for your customers, just making sure they have everything that you support that you like. So again, I know this is the very, very basics of the search, but um, as I'm going to pull up another example here in a second with all the with all the distributors hooked up, we're going to talk about the power of the search functionality that Adaptive has, and there is a lot of power in there. But again, if you're looking to get up and running as fast as possible, this is it, right? As soon as you can pull some products in there and we can sync it in, you're just building a bunch of stuff. If you want to build a bundle of products, you'd use your workspaces here. And in this case, right, I can go ahead and build whatever workspace I want. So you can see I've already got one for a general employee package. And literally all that entails is same thing I just did. Instead of adding the one product to the storefront, I would just click the button to add it to the workspace. And then I'd publish that workspace as a bundle. And then that bundle shows up inside of the store like here. So you've got your kind of main level products and then you've got your bundles here. You can see I've been playing with a couple different ones and you're off to the races. So once again, for the sake of the, the demonstration, the discussion, the actual act of adding in stuff to the storefront takes no more than a couple of minutes really, right? It's just about you deciding which products you want in front of your customers. But the big power to storefront comes from Again, distributor look and the search criteria and the filter, the filtration system of all these search items, which I'll get to in a second. Let me pause and take a look at some of these questions real quick. So James is asking, how, how granular can we get on the pricing markups, flat markup or customer product type markup, or uh, art piece, or maybe not piece, sorry. Override. It's price override. Price override based on part number. Uh, quite. So let's talk about that a little bit better. So let's take a look at even some of these ones here. So when we go into the specific areas of the um, of the products, right? When we actually get to the storefront section, you've got a general markup over here, and you've also got the markups that you could do uh, by fixed percent or fixed number. You've got percentage number. Oh, there we go, Stephen. You may be joining us. That's nice. Mm -hmm. So you might be in here for a little bit too, and then also by gross margin. So the way that markups work in general is that you've got your markups settable kind of globally. So if you go back to the storefront, there's an area in general for it under, this is where I may need a little help from you, Stephen. Is that one? Uh, yeah. So it's under, so you can either set it globally. Um, so under global settings, there is a default or you can set it on the individual storefront. Uh -huh, um, yeah. yeah. Different and markup. then you can pick whether it's a fixed price. So $20 markup, hundred dollar markup, uh, gross margin or a, um, percentage markup. So 10%, 15%. Um, uh, and then you can override that on a specific item as well. We don't allow you to specifically override the price. Um, because as distributors fluctuate pricing, we don't want it where you end up with losing money, uh, because a Ingram, increased the price of a laptop by $100 and you only had a $50 markup set. We do allow you to set a minimum price though. So you can say, okay, I want to make 5%, but make sure it's at least $2,000. Um, at that point, it will take whichever of those is um, higher. So you can have it so that it normally will be a nice looking price. So if you want it to always be a a $100, $200, $300. Um, you can have it do that. And then if the price increases to the point where you wouldn't make any money, if that happened, then you can have it fall back to the markup. Nice. Yeah. And then the other question I had too in the Q&A was, uh, I suppose about the this product syncing from the PSA was, does it ignore inactive items? And can you set which categories of items to sync from the PSA? Um, so currently we don't import inactive items from ConnectWise. So we, we filter out inactive items completely. Um, 
and we don't currently allow you to pick which category comes in. Um, but since we do pull in the category, you can see all of the items in his search uh, are under the miscellaneous category at the moment. Um, we You can easily search and filter on the categories and you're not listing everything in ConnectWise on your storefront. So you're picking and choosing. Exactly. Okay, so again, should be really simple. I'm not going to recap it too, too many times, but you can see that with the PSA connected one, it's pretty easy to pick and choose stuff. The biggest downside to this, and, and you can see it, is that like there may be some manual legwork with having to create these products and kind of flesh them out because you obviously want a good experience for the end users, right? You want this to kind of show up nicely. And then based on how that shows up, they're going to have a better experience if it's nice and clear, it's got nice pictures, it has a good description, so on and so forth. So let me swap over to a different view with distributors hooked up and see what the difference is there. And we're going to take a look at this back and forth. Back and forth. While we're going to take a look at how this actually shows up, even in terms of the filters available on the side. So you can see that there's not too, too much here right now. But when I swap over here and let's go to the side right here, this search inside, in fact, has a bunch of distributors. And you can see that our number is a little bit bigger, right? This is 277,000 available things. So when I go ahead and search something, so let's type in what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get a bunch more options because again, now this is pulling from distributors. It's pulling the, the pricing from these distributors as well. So number one, we see that the images and stuff pull through and you can see that there's a lot more details in there too. So this is the stuff that if you were to flip this on and turn this into the storefront, it's going to be a lot more valuable, right? So again, you have to do a lot less work. You're not putting anything in there. And then in addition to it, a lot of the details that come from the distributors get pulled through. And then this is kind of the power of adaptive. I won't put words in their mouth, but specifically with facets and tags and whatnot, makes it really easy to be granular about what you're looking for rather than the hyper specifics. And that's going to give you kind of more flexibility and options as you search for these things. So you can see that as I kind of look through them, um, this additional detail is what makes it kind of special and makes it easy to build the more powerful, more relevant bundles for those users. So if I were to go through and actually look at the search now, right, let's actually search for some of the stuff. You can see that I've got a lot more expanded options. And again, when I start searching for this stuff, you may not necessarily know off the top of your head all the things that you want, but what you do know is you may want certain things over other things. So let's say for attributes, you know, you know that 4G or 5G is a, it's a, it's a must have, or like the aspect ratio, you must have 69. You can start to kind of describe exactly whether that's a mandatory thing, a nice to have, you know, an, an omit from this thing. So you can start filtering down the searches for what you're really looking for, in addition to the prices, in addition to the stock, in addition to everything. So you really, really dial in exactly what you're looking for. So you kind of set parameters for kind of what you're willing to support and what you're willing to kind of sell over to your clients. So that's huge, right? And again, cross comparison, this view, just PSA, you can see that I don't have all that much because again, it's based on the categories and whatnot that I have in my PSA, which is not going to be much like most MSPs, but the distributor stuff really amps it up quite a bit. Um, I hope I did that justice, you guys. <laughs> that's, that's that's how I've been doing it internally. So hopefully that's all right. Yeah. Um, so as you build a lot of this stuff again, it's like these things are going to be uh, a lot more, more pretty in the store. And then the other thing too, I'm not going to go super crazy because I don't do it all that much, but also the custom, the co column customization rather. It's like another pretty important thing. So if you want to have the things that matter to you, you're not stuck with the current view. It's pretty, pretty um, flexible, right? So we can add as many things as you want to make this really your own. And even then it's down to the individual profile. So if you're in there and you're managing your own stuff and you want to make sure everything looks good to you and it makes sense to you, you can go ahead and do that. And again, you're going to be able to get individual user profiles with this um, adaptive catalog and cloud radial collab. So storefront lets you have your own view and make sure that if you're in there with another person, you're managing things your own way, you do get to, you know, not, you're not kind of stepping on each other as you build out your storefronts. So with that being said, let me swap back over. As we build stuff out, right, that kind of brings us back to what else can we do with it? Well, again, we've got the ability to build the storefront out. We've got the ability to add everything in there. Then we've also got the ability to kind of decide how we want that stuff to come through. So in my case, even the opportunity creation is kind of up to you. So don't steal my keys because my private key is secret. But in general, like that start to finish step through is really it coming through and creating that opportunity. So 
I've got a couple of them created, but the nice thing about working inside of cloud radio and having that kind of be a full loop is that when a user goes through the storefront experience, right, that front end, which looks like this, they pick those products and they go through and they buy it and they, they kind of set everything up back inside of cloud radio. Once they complete that or order and they purchase, it actually shows back up inside of their account. So they have account and, uh, quotes, right? These are the opportunities. And we've got a couple that we've created in the past, but based on what they're seeing, they actually get that confirmation, not just in the store that their order's gone through, but they actually have that additional bit here saying like, hey, you know, in this case, I tried to try to do a Dropbox user or whatever have you. And because the naming convention is up to you and there's tags available, you can make this as generic or distinct as you want, but they get to see that coming through. So it's really valuable as an end user when you can see the same thing start to finish all the way through and it kind of makes sense and reaffirms that you they did it. They, they, they You listen to them, they have everything they want right there and then. Swap over to this guy. Okay, so the actual logistics of getting the um, a whining dog lives. There he is. The logistics of getting the storefront set up too, uh, for the professional version, right? People have asked me about that too. Like, kind of, what is the work? What is it? What does it entail? And that's something we work with you too. So, we have professional services to help you out that are kind of in the mix when you go from starter to a professional. Which, why is that? Well, when you get to the the bigger part of the uh, the distributors, there's a little bit of work to be done there, right? So. As we actually go through and add in distributor products, there's there's kind of a lot to, to deal with there. Now, the distributors have APIs, and then obviously like myself and the, the respective Stevens from Adaptive, we work with uh, the distributors to kind of pull those keys, but we also work to, to um, get the price files from those distributors too to make sure that everything is consistent because what we don't want happening is we don't want the APIs, which can kind of be hit or miss, to uh, cause you to have a hit or miss experience with your end users. So the part of setting all these distributors up, making sure that everything is nice and hooked up properly so that uh, whenever you look for products, they're there and the pricing appears and everything kind of works seamlessly is really important. So the step up from starter to professional isn't just that you have the better products, but it's also you have a nice consistent experience with those distributors in the first place. Um, again, it's kind of hard to show because in our own test instance, we're specifically connected to ConnectWise and there's not that much to look at, but it's something that we do assist you with. Um, and we have plenty of documentation on that too. So again, this is more of a of a double check for everybody else. But if you wanted to take a look at what that actually looks like today, since there's a lot to it, if you go to our own radials.io slash support, Adaptive has their own as well. Everything that we have listed on the storefront right here um, goes from how to set up every single aspect of it, right? Kind of like what we just talked about on this webinar. So whether it's literally start to finish setting it up or adding products like in the order kind of we recommend it all the way down to setting up specific things. So again, if you're looking for PAX8, if you work with one or multiple distributors, all those steps are documented exactly the way that we recommend them and that we've seen success with. So something like storefront can be a little bit harrowing for people because there's a lot of steps to it, but we've done, I think, a really good job. And obviously uh, myself and an adaptive catalog and both teams are here to help throughout the whole process, but we follow this and we try to improve on it. So as we release it and we make this public and we kind of get more people in there, we're also looking for you guys to give us feedback and make sure that everything goes as smooth as possible to, to work this out. Let me answer a couple more questions here. Okay. So James is asking, a bundle maybe may always be a fixed price, same with the product, especially it comes from a, a deal, Dell deal reg, the products are retained in the stock at the MSP. So... <laughs> Is it a question about the variability of the bundle? Let's see if, if you guys have gotten that one before. Uh, I think it. I think he's asking a follow up on the the pricing question. Um, so if you were to set the markup to be zero dollars on that, um, and then you set the minimum price to be, uh, let's say the bundle minimum price is two thousand five hundred dollars, as long as the the cost to you doesn't increase past that two thousand five hundred dollar mark which it shouldn't if it's deal regged or if it's inside your ConnectWise system, um, then it will always, to the end customer, appear at that $2,500 price. Yeah, and I just pulled up, I think this is where you said it too. So in those workspaces where you build those bundles, when you decide that that bundle should go in the storefront, 
This is where you actually go in here and set that minimum price detail right there. And then also the other nice thing that uh, I was saving, but I think it's a good time to talk about it is the concept of different stores too. So you may have the, the stores, you know, just one generic store, which is what I've seen a couple of MSPs kind of opt for right now. But another thing that's really good that uh, I really like that Adaptive has done is they've added the opportunity to create different stores kind of from templates if you even wanted to do that. So what that looks like is as you go through and you actually create your store, right? Again, generic store, you have your primary flagship one, but maybe you have client A that is big enough that they they warrant their own kind of set of products. Um, maybe they have their own markups, maybe they have their own bundles, like there could be just a different set of stuff. So you can set up multiple and that's something you can do off the bat with the starter one. You get more of them as you go to professional and enterprise, but you can still do this with starter so as we go to build our different ones, you can see I've done it for the Phoenix store. We can even build a brand new one. You basically get a brand new little menu where you're not having to start all the way from scratch, but as you go through and add your own stuff, right? Customize the look and feel of it and whatnot. There is the, again, the entire section there. So whether you want to uh, keep going and inherit kind of the primary one, if you want to change your opportunity details and then set your markup there. And then as you saw, right, this is again, whether you want to inherit from there or as we build out those bundles, and even as we add those bundles to our respective stores, you can choose whether, you know, store A and store B gets different markups there too. So there's a lot of flexibility, even on a store by store basis. And then as it relates to how they access it right back in cloud radio, since this is the access point for how they get to their stores, <clears throat> even though from client A to client B, they may see this button and it may be exactly the same UI, right? The same exact UX, they click on the same thing. What's happening on the back end is um, as you go to create clients and you go to create customers, there's an option inside of, uh, let me pick the, the Phoenix group. That was the actual one that has its own store in my own testing. Um, you get a spot to override it. So in, in, in the integrations, there's a spot down here for um, you know the different keys. So when you create those new stores, we're literally able to say like, hey, do you want to send them to the default? Do you want to send them to their own ones? So even that's super simple to make sure that everybody gets their own respective stuff. Right. So there's a lot of flexibility, even on the actual implementation of who gets what. <laughs> Safi, I saw you raised your hand. Safi works for us. I don't know if you had anything to say, but either way, if you did that on purpose, I saw that hand raise. You're there. I see you. Okay. Um, let me double check. So I was going through quite a bit of sleep. Like, it looks like James had one more question um, for uh, that'll be on your side as to if you can filter the opportunities that are shown inside the cloud radio portal we sure can so with the actual opportunities that show up i want to say i haven't done this in a little bit my own psa setup let me double check and see if it's here before i start saying stuff agreements quotes uh -huh. so cloud radio's quote display is a little weird but uh fundamentally you can so what happens with the quotes is as we decide what we want to show, if we go back to partner and settings, and then we go to our uh, integrations, we don't actually integrate directly with um, quote providers. So even though in our integrations page, you're going to see stuff like quota and quote works or like um, Zen contract and stuff, really what's happening is you can use any one of these as kind of filters, uh, depending on which one you have. If you have one of these, what we're doing with them is we're kind of looking at the way that they look at quotes and some of these different quoting tools use some language, they, some of them use uh, multiple attachments and stuff to try to keep them clean. The description between each one of them kind of talks about like everything shown, any PDF, any HTML, whatever, but you can enable one of these if you have one of them or not, and just use this as a filtration status. So you can definitely choose to limit it by status or limit it by type, but either way, when you do that, it's gonna make sure that only the right type show. So yeah, you can totally do it. And we're not gonna put stuff that's pending or you're not quite sure about to make sure that when they go to their quotes, they see just the right ones. Absolutely. Okay. I think I've answered the majority, if not all, the questions we had on there. Um, let me see if there's anything else we want to take a look at. I think that may actually be it for the the search portion of it. Again, we've tried, I've tried really hard specifically to make this as easy as possible to kind of get people to want to go ahead and try it and get it in front of customers. Um, is there any other stuff that you guys, uh, the adapts side, would like to talk about or showcase for people? I'll leave the floor for some questions. Um, nothing I can think of offhand. 
again, it's like, uh, I'm pretty impressed with us because we went from taking, I, I went from taking like an hour plus to talk about this to, I'm glad we were able to do something like a deep dive in about 30 minutes. So again, that documentation, I'll re-reference it, is really helpful for me, for us, because um, even if you wanted to take a look at it, right, this is public online for us, except for the learning about it and implementing, which are our secret guides for the back end. Don't tell everybody we have those. But pretty much everything we've got is broken down in granular detail. And we've, you know, the, the adaptive documentation is fantastic. We've literally just taken that and just added a little bit more color to it. But for the most part, like every single thing in granular detail from how those filters work to how you can, you know, like we we're talking about the bundling and the pricing and the, and the, um, the uh, markups and whatnot is documented really, really well. So if you have a question on literally any one of these things, as you kind of go through it and think about it, um, it explains it in really granular detail. So I'm really, really bullish on documentation, but especially for storefront, uh, this stuff is pretty killer because in addition to videos, in addition to all of these, even these are bite-sized. So as we go through all of these, learning about how to create end user access, learning about how to add customizations to your, your products or bundling or whatever have you, it should take about, again, 30 minutes to an hour tops to get it set up and running. So this is not some huge project you have to set a bunch of people on. We've tried to make this really start and, start and stop within you know, as little time as possible. Get to another chat question here too. Oh yes, Mike, who also works for us. Uh, if you guys are existing partners and you have questions and you want to give this a shot for yourself, you can reach out to your account managers at success at cloudradio.com and we'll get you set up. And we'll make sure that you have access and you can start playing around with it yourself and building in your products. And obviously, if you have any issues and anything, um, support at cloudradio.com is your friend. We'll make sure that we reach out and get everything set up, make sure nothing gets stuck and gummed up. But again, we're hopeful that as more and more people use this, they'll give us some good feedback on their thoughts, right? Um, making sure things looks nice and smooth. And again, we we expect to have this out within the next couple of weeks. Uh, we were supposed to have it out a couple of weeks ago, but I got sick, so not happening for a little bit but for the most part we're coming back strong and uh i think i think we'll adjourn us a little bit early if anyone else has any questions please feel free and again i know a couple people personally emailed me before this saying they couldn't make it but they had a couple questions anyways if after you watch this you have any questions feel free to again email support at cloudradio.com directly for those questions or just email me ricky at cloudradio.com happy to answer stuff and uh give a one-on-one -on -one if you have any any follow-ups um Without further ado, I think I think that's that's it, old Jernos. Uh, I want to say thank you to both Stevens for joining me and uh, answering questions and whatnot. Thanks, guys. I guess I'll catch you for the next one. Thanks. See ya. Have a good rest of your day. You too.